Hi and welcome back to Photoshop Elements Imaging Techniques and Tips. I'm your host as always Ken Keith and this is the first episode of 2011 and the beginning of our third season. Now those of you who are not familiar with this series, it was originally created for a local Beginning Elements user group here in the Kansas City area. But now we're reaching a worldwide audience here on Vimeo and on YouTube. But wherever you're watching, thanks for dropping by. And by the way, you're invited to join me daily on my photo blog, kkeithphoto.wordpress.com, and on Facebook. And speaking of the photo blog, I've opened it up here, and uh, I'm going to go back to a post from a couple of days back, and the title of which uh, uh, takes its uh, uh, from a, a line in the age of Aquarius, by the fifth dimension. And of course, this is not truly an astronomical uh, image that you would see from uh, a capture from the Hubble Space Telescope, but it was all done in Photoshop Elements, and I've had uh, several people ask me how this was done. They were interested in using a similar technique, uh, either as a background image or as a standalone piece of art with uh, varied elements, and so I wanted to share that technique with you today and give you a foundation and give you a start here on the basic uh, technique and uh, uh, how to create this background. So we'll start here in the full edit mode and we'll go up to file and new and blank file and if you'd like to have something uh, printed off on a uh, home printer I just went ahead and made this an 8.5 by 11 in uh, portrait mode 300 uh, PPI resolution and I'm going to take the background color and my defaults over here are, are switched around so that now that my background color is black so I'm just going to click OK. We'll drag this document out. This is a blank document and the first thing that we're going to do here is uh, we're going to really work the filter menu today and we'll go up there to filter and to noise and add noise. Somewhere around 40 is, is a good starting point. Uh, you can use your slider or just input the value there. Your distribution you'll want to be in Gaussian. We don't want it to be uniform and uh, since we don't want any color in this part be certain that your monochromatic box is checked and accept that by clicking OK or enter. And then we're going to go uh, back up into the filter menu. And we're going to put just a little bit of a blur on this. So we'll go to blur. And once again, it'll be a Gaussian blur. And I've already got this set. Um, one half of a pixel for radius will be fine. Make sure you have your preview windows always checked uh, as on for all, all these operations. And click OK. And then once again, uh, back to fill the filter menu again for uh, the adjustment layer, <laughs> not an adjustment layer, but for the adjustment filter, and choose threshold. And everything goes black. And what you're going to do to bring out your faux stars is just get a hold of your slider here and begin moving it to the left you'll start to see your star field pop out. Uh, there's no real magic number here, just make a selection and um, experiment around uh, to your own liking there. Preview on and accept it with an OK or an Enter. And you can see your stars kind of in the background there. And we're going to go ahead, I think, and um, give these stars just a little bit of a blur. So once again, filter menu blur and Gaussian blur and the same a half of, of one pixel will be fine there. Alright, now uh, a lot of times um, and, and what we, we did on the previous image that you saw on the blog is that we're going to add a lens flare and uh, these things can often look like uh, you know, a, a, a bright object field that is causing this flare something like a quasar, a pulsar, uh, a gas giant, or, or a large star. 
So to do that, we're going to want to put that on its own layer. So just go ahead. Now, once again, I'm on uh, Elements 9. The uh, Add a New Layer icon is down here on 9, and on previous versions, it will be up above here. Do that. All right. And uh, we're going to fill this uh, also with with black. Shift my defaults over here. Alt back space. We'll do that. We'll fill it with black. And then, once again, our friend the filter menu. And this time it's going to be render and cleverly enough lens flare. Now there are uh, three things that you can uh, do here to make adjustments to lens flare. First of all, how bright it's going to be, the type of lens that's to be used, and each one of these will produce a different sort of pattern. Uh, the movie prime, you've, you've got the uh, like almost a little, little uh, diffraction, star diffraction. Uh, you have the prime here, 35 millimeter prime, which is uh, a pretty nifty one, and uh, I use the 50 to 300. Um, I'm going to start out by making this uh, fairly bright. And I'm going to relocate uh, the center point. But you have a crosshair just to bring your cursor there, and you can start moving that around a bit. And click OK. And that's pretty nifty. Now, uh, to bring your lens flare back into your star field, what you're going to do is change your blend mode of that layer. And instead of the normal, you're going to change it to screen. Now, if this is too prominent, you can always um, backpedal with uh, edit, or you can just use your opacity, uh, layer opacity over here. Uh, you'll remember we call these uh, scrubby sliders. You can either access the opacity from the drop down, and do the slider there or you can just point to the word opacity. You have the little hand with the finger and the arrows pointing each direction and just move that up and down uh, to your liking. Now this could be an end point for you and it was except for the uh, framing effect that I did for the blog image but uh, we're going to add something a little bit extra today. Um, this does have uh, with all this uh, star field and noise you do see uh, maybe a pattern of um, uh, like like a galaxy in there. You could also go back to your your background and uh, just by uh, painting in black, you could open up some lacunae in there. But what I'm going to do here this time, I'm going to highlight the background layer, and uh, we're going to go to add another layer in between there. And once again, uh, Alt Backspace to fill it with black. And I'm just going to turn off the visibility here of the star field by pressing the little eye icon. Right. Just have a nice black one. I'm going to set my foreground now back to white. I'm going to get the brush tool. And up here, we're going to put the mode as lighten and the opacity as 100%. And I'm just simply going to do something like this. And up in uh, this area, I might just kind of give it a, a little bit of a swirl effect. It's looking kind of like uh, amorphous blog blobs or uh, uh, some kind of crazy stick figures or kids art, but <laughs> we'll uh, do something with that. So we've got this layer here now, and uh, there's a couple of things you can do. If you'd like, you can unnest here uh, the smudge tool that's in here with blur and sharpen. You can also go here to filter and to distort and liquefy. And in the liquefy uh, dialog, you have, of course, a, quite a number of tools. Uh, you have you know, a blow tool. I'm just going to kind of 
feather some of these out, stretch it out just a little bit with the bloat, or uh, I'm sorry, with liquefy. And um, here's one that's interesting that's called twirl clockwise tool, in which you will just hold down uh, your, your mouse button, and this begins creating a, a, a twirling action. And I think what I've um, kind of decided to, to do about that is uh, to do it a, in a couple of different places and uh, maybe simulate some of these uh, spiral galaxies that are out there in space. And you know, just go around. Once again, uh, each pattern, every time you do this, you're, you're probably going to uh, get a new effect, uh, which is great. So you, sometimes you have some real serendipity things happening uh, on these and uh, just go ahead and experiment uh, it, it's something just to have have fun with anyway and we'll click OK we'll just leave it at that for now All right. once that loads up we're we're back there and I'm going to turn the visibility back on on the star field and of course that looks really stupid but uh, what we'll do here on this layer, let's turn our blend mode here to overlay and then begin to reduce the opacity of that. And see, once you get back down into 20% or below, uh, you have the indications of other galaxies uh, within your image. So there's a lot of things that you can do with it. Have fun, experiment around, use it as a standalone image or or something for a background. Have a great 2011 and we hope to see you back here soon. Take care and we'll talk again.